Hello and welcome to this edition of EduLeader Speaks. I am Dipta Joshi from Education World and our guest today is Shishir Jaipuria, the grandson of nationalist, industrialist, educationist, Seth Mungtu Ram Jaipuria. Shishir Jaipuria was appointed chairman of the Seth Anand Ram Jaipuria's group of education institutions in 2010 with the mandate to carry forward the family's education and human capital development legacy. Under his leadership, the group has rapidly expanded, particularly in the educationally underserved Hindi heartland states of Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, and Madhya Pradesh. Currently, the group boasts of 14 K-12 schools, five preschools, and two business management colleges in North India, and the aggregate enrollment is 20,000 students. Uh, Mr. Jaipuria also serves as the co-chair for Fikki Alliance for reimagining school education. And that's not all. He's also involved in many philanthropic causes. Welcome, sir. It's such a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. So where would you place education on your national list of priorities? Firstly, let me thank you for inviting me over for this session. As far as your question is concerned, I place education and skill development at the topmost on my priority as far as national needs are concerned. Mm -hmm. We all know that we have almost like 250 million students and a very young population who deserves the best. And I would like to see our country to again become a wish for guru in terms of education so that we are able to attract the best gurus and philosophers from all over the world and also the students, not only from within our country, but also from outside the country. So while the pandemic has resulted in technology being integrated with education, problems like access, internet access that is, and teacher training, etc., have continued. Uh, what is your suggestion to make Indian education digital ready? Well, uh, we had faced a lot of challenges during the pandemic. And the digi digital divide that you have mentioned has adversely affected particularly the students who have been either in the remote areas or rural areas. So issues with regard to connectivity with devices have been there and a robust system has to be there so that each student is able to get access both to technology and to devices and networks. Mm -hmm. And some partnership between the private and public is required so that the excess can be made at a faster pace. Apart from this, it is very important that the teachers also develop the required skills. And I think our country has done a great job where a lot of focus has gone into professional development and our teachers have been using various tools and different types of app apps which are required in today's scenario. Okay, so, so if uh, you know, this prescription that you have laid out, if that has to be met, then what are the three decisions that you would like the Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan to announce? Well, uh, I think that the government is on the right path because the new education policy has already been announced. Mm -hmm. The three prescriptions, as you mentioned, one would be to reascertain where we stand and what are mm -hmm. the concern areas and how fast we can implement those concern areas. So we'll have to have a proper data bank and mapping with regard to what each school is doing and how we can make the change at the minimum time frame. The second thing is that we have to go for a very rigorous teachers training program and they should fully be immersed into technology because technology I believe will be the biggest enabler. And the third thing is that education being such a wide subject, the partnership between public and private has to be there and freedom and autonomy to a large extent have to be given to the private institutions to be able to bring in the best quality education within our country. So how enthusiastic are you about blended or hybrid learning? Well, I personally feel blended and hybrid learning is the only way forward. And pandemic has taught us that students are getting used to it teachers are also getting used to it. And if we are able to further improvise our teaching and learning methodologies, so it will be something 
where access can be created for children who are not able to come to school and it can become a huge opportunity for us and it is i would i personally feel it's a great blessing in disguise uh, so how satisfied are you with the growth and development of the seth anandram jaipuria group of educational institutions just to give you a perspective our group has been into the education for the last 75 years because we started in 1945 when our college was opened in calcutta and our journey has been really satisfying we have been into schools free schools higher ed and my father always believed in excellence so we have been promoting excellence wherever we have opened different types of schools and i am very fortunate that we have very inspired and motivated team of teachers who are carrying the legacy forward we also started a teachers training academy mm -hmm. for research under the brand star which is also ensuring that mm -hmm. quality education is firstly uh, known to the teachers and so that they can deliver the best to the students and also would like to mention that we are very recently we have been recognized by the great place to work as a place which has culture and trust and which is trying to imbibe the best values and systems for our whole ecosystem particularly the teaching community okay congratulations on that sir thank you okay so a little about yourself now how would you describe your leadership style well uh, our family has been into industry and also in education as you did mention and my all father always believe in a collaborative approach he always wanted to attract the best people and to empower them and to retain them so our philosophy has been to get the right people empower them give them freedom to work do ideation and make mistakes but unless you give an opportunity to the best of people you can never succeed in a nutshell i would say that we believe in people first so uh, any book on education that you would recommend well of late uh, very recently i just finished reading a book digital leadership by eric shenringa now this is a book which really inspired me to the core and it talks about a road map on seven important pillars and in today's context this book is extremely relevant for all school leaders because it gives you a road map that how do you want to run a school when everything is being digitized we are seeing that anything that can be digitized should be digitized and the teacher should be free to be able to take uh, the learning outcomes to improve the joy of learning and to do for take out time for project based learning so i think uh, it is very inspirational and we'll be we have done a lot of soul searching and i think uh, it will be brilliant a lot of people can read this book and take education to the next level any nobel laureate that you admire well there are a couple of them but if you talk about one i would say that john bardeen is the person who has been awarded the nobel prize in physics twice and he is the one who whom i admire a lot because of the invention that he did both in terms of transistors and super conductors and he won the nobel prize twice in 1956 and 1972 and we have seen the exponential growth in technology and lot of it goes to him and the learnings that we got from the invention that he did okay uh, so is there a thinker or philosopher who inspires you i always held swami vivekanand as an all time great and his thinking about education is something which i greatly cherish and value he has inspired the world through the principles of purity patience and perseverance in all spheres of life okay okay sir lastly are you optimistic or pessimistic about the educational situation and scenario in india well honestly speaking i am a born optimistic and i think india today is in a very sweet spot and we have a huge potential for improving both our quality and access of students for education and the new education policy 
if it is implemented in the right earnest, if the money is made available, and if the partnership between the public and private is there, I think that we will be able to undoubtedly create something which is exceptionally great for both our children and also for the educators. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. That is a very good note to end on. Uh, thank you again for your insightful answers. It was a, it was a pleasure having you. Thank you indeed.